you're good to your teachers praise the Lord hallelujah Acts chapter 2 verse 20 Praise God. I'll give you a few minutes to get there. Acts chapter 2, verse 20. And it says, And whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that what that says? What's it say? What's the first part? Yeah, give me the first part. Huh? I'm sorry, Acts 21. Yes. I always thought it was 20 and 21. That must be 1 Peter. It's 20 and 21. 1 Peter 3, when we teach baptism, is 20 and 21. But this is Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And whosoever, whosoever, I'm speaking a new language. Whosoever, I sound like a little kid. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that what that says? Then it, goes down, then it goes down a little further. He says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. I'm going to tell you the same thing. Ye of New Hope Pentecostal Church, hear these words. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. We call upon you in the name of Jesus to bless this church and its progress, its growth, its plans for revival. God, we're so grateful that there are people getting baptized, getting the Holy Ghost. Two got the Holy Ghost today. Three are getting baptized. Maybe four. I don't know. Because God is able. God, we ask you right now to touch this church. Touch their hearing and their understanding so that they would see that there is a distinction that needs to be made from what's being taught in today's society and what the Word of God says. Let them see that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let it be clear and let it be just unmistakable. The distinction. We have a God of distinction. He wants to make a difference between man and woman, good and bad, sin and salvation. He is a God of distinction. He's not a God of blending. He doesn't blend everything together. He is a God of distinction. God, let us understand that in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 You clap on the Lord one more time. Oh, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to tell you it is an honor to be the pastor of this church. I mean, it's a lot of work. You go through a lot of things as a pastor, but every step of the way is worth it. The benefits are wonderful. I may not be getting a salary, but I got great retirement. Uh, retirement plan's cool. I get streets of gold and uh, all kinds of rubies and jewels in the walls. Uh, joy, unspeakable, no sickness, no sin. <laughs> uh, so I'm good. The Lord is going to take care of his servants. Praise the Lord. There is something that I want to share with you today. There has been several, if not too many, there's not always a lot, but there's always people when they come to this church, they feel the power. They feel the anointing. They feel the excitement. But there's one thing that tends to happen. It's not with everybody, but there's, there's always people who have this problem. And I want to make sure, if any way possible, the people in this church, this doesn't happen to. It happens to even some people who are just, you know, on fire for the church and excited. But there's always this thing that, that tends to creep up in certain people. And I want to kick it out today if it's, if it's here, if it's not wonderful. But I want us to make sure there is a distinction. In the scripture that I just read you, the Lord gave me a very clear and distinct revelation. And it's not my revelation, it's a revelation of the word of God. It's his revelation, it's his, his a clarification of his words. Everything I'm going to tell you, you're going to be able to see it right in the word of God. So, today's society, we were teaching a Bible study on Tuesday, how that today's mantra of salvation is to accept the Lord as your personal savior. And Britt was like, well... Is, I said, do you think that's in the Bible? She goes, well, I don't, I don't see it. Or something like that. And I told her, well, it's not in there. That's why you're not going to find it. Isn't it amazing that the, one, the most important thing that can happen to a person when they come in contact with God is being taught with something that's not in the Bible? 
a tool is being used that's not biblical or scriptural. It's never said, written, or spoken by the men that were teaching the doctrine at the time. The apostles never said these things. Jesus never said these things. And so what I want to do is make a distinction today so that when we go into Bible study on Tuesday, it'll be easier for you to understand why I'm teaching that Bible study. So the Lord showed me in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, I was asking a question. If indeed, I'm a Bible thumper. And see, when I came to God, I was a crack addict and alcoholic. Uh, and more of a crack addict than alcoholic. Alcohol was just a way for me to come down. The, the, al the alcohol I really wasn't addicted to was just, it's just dangerous for you to partake in because it could lead you to the drug of your choice. But my drug of choice was cocaine. And so I come into this church and, and I know I'm needing God. I'm going to different churches. Uh, from, from the moment I left Boston to head towards this way, I started listening to the radio on, uh, and looking for Bible. The weirdest thing in the world, me. Uh, whenever I see Bible on TV or, or heard of the radio, man, I change that channel so quick. What in the world I want to hear that for? I want to hear some music. I want to be bumping on the road. I don't want to know scriptures. But now... I'm, all my parents know they, they're taking me to a rehab in upstate New York. They know I'm a drug addict and alcoholic. It's no secret. And so here I am looking for radio stations that are talking about the Bible. They bought me a little radio, a little headset so I could, uh, and, I'm, and you know, you're driving across country, it changes from state to state what radio is, is doing Bible. And sometimes there's none, but I'm looking for it because I know I need God. God's calling me and saying, listen, there is something that you need from me. And, and when, you're, when you're first coming around, that voice is very faint. It's like, I'm here. Look for me. It's like a whisper leading you in that direction. Now that voice becomes louder. Like now when I pray, that voice begins to be very clear on what he wants me to do or give me direction, especially from the word of God. But at that time in my life, it's a whisper. Shh, hey, just, just, just head this way. Come this way. And so being desperate makes you more sensitive. Oh, come on, somebody. Makes you more sensitive to the sound of that. Shh, hey, shh, shh. and you're like, what? Somebody call but see, when you're in your sin and you're partying and you're doing your thing, you can't hear that voice. And there may be times that God's even wanted your attention, but you dr you're too busy. It's drowned out. But when you're in pain and suffering and hurting or confusion or failure, all of a sudden you got more time to think and, and, and you're, you're sitting in your, in your sulkiness and in your stuff and you're... Shh, you hear, okay, wait a minute. I, I, heard, I, thought, I think I heard something. I need to go in that direction. And you become willing to follow when you are broken and hurt. That's why when people come here and, and, they're, and they're praying, DJ, I told you, break. That's a good thing because then you can begin to hear the Lord better because we're not so busy talking our own, <laughs> saying our own things and making our own demands and, and looking for what we want. We can start listening for what God wants. Can I get amen? amen. So uh, I'm on my way here to Gallup. I get here and I'm going to churches and you know, doing what I'm supposed to do. I was Albuquerque. I went to a couple churches. And I basically judged church based on the music and by the people. But I didn't know to judge church by what they're teaching. Why? Because I didn't know the difference. So I go to church and I'm picking a church by the people and by the music and, and by the atmosphere. Maybe how it looks or how it feels. And so I went to some churches in Albuquerque. I made a commitment not to be in any relationships because I knew I couldn't be in a relationship without intimacy but with a woman. So I made a, de a determination and a dedication. I'm not going to date girls. That just doesn't go good for me. I need to grow up. I need to be a man. I, learn how to, I need to learn how to be who I need to be in God before I can start being in a relationship. I even committed watching less TV. I'd see things, you know, the booty shaking and the video, music videos. I'd be like, oh, I got to go. I can't watch this. Because I knew I had to start getting out the flesh and bringing in some spirit. So I get to Gallup and I'm going to the Christian Reformed Church on the, uh, on, on the west side, east side, way east side. And they're good people and, you know, I was raised around people like them. They, they, I was comfortable there and, you know, they, they ask questions of the church and they don't even know me from Adam. And I'm like raising my hand because I'm Mr. You know, talkative and, and I would say my little thing and speak up and felt very comfortable there. It was cool. I got the, but you know what? I didn't need to be speaking. I needed to be listening. I need to be being taught. I didn't need to be trying to teach the church. I'm this new convert with no relationship with God except for the, Shh, hey, this way. That's all I had. All I had to offer was carnality, but I talked good. And, and, and I looked 
healthy. And so, you know, they let me share because in, in that atmosphere, there's no distinction. But then I started going to this apostolic church. Bunch of hoop and holler and carrying on crazy people. I said, good Lord. But I think I like it. I told you about Sister Julia who would stand in the corner. I watch her because what I did was I was going, they didn't have a, an evening service at Rehoboth. So I'd go to the morning service at Rehoboth and go, and I considered that my church. And then I'd visit those guys in the evening just for entertainment. Just to watch these guys carrying on. And there was a little bit of excitement. I was like, I was just kind of curious because I'm an excitement junkie. I'm, I like exciting things. I don't, I don't like, I don't be bored. And so I'm, I'm headed to, towards this place in the evening, but I'm like, hey, but I got my church. Don't get, don't get crazy now. I'm here, but I'm just visiting. Okay. Don't get, don't, don't expect me. This, this isn't my church. I'm over here. So they're like, they know, they knew how God was going to work. That's okay. Go ahead. Just visit. We like coming around. I said, good. I'll come around. Just don't push me. I'll be pushing, I'll be gone. It might sound familiar. <clears throat> Anyways, so I'm going to this morning service, going to the evening service, but then they had one of these Holy Ghost breakouts. And see, they did this weird thing I didn't understand. I'd never been involved in this. They rose their hands. I don't know if I got that right. My wife's going to get mad at me. Is it raised or rose? I'm going to say raised. I'm going to say raised because I'll probably get in trouble with my wife later. So I raised my hands. Because they were doing this thing where they would, and I didn't really understand it, but you know, I, I was feeling something that night. So I said, I'm going to, I'm telling you, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I'm like, I'm going to try this out. Felt weird because it wasn't comfortable. I didn't understand it. But now I know what the Bible says. It says, raise holy hands without wrath and doubt. And there's a wave offered that can, can be given. People doing like this. I'm like, what are we Hey ho! I'm like, What's what is that? That's the only only thing I know about wave raving hands, concert style. I don't know, but I tried it because I felt something moving in this church. This is a Holy Ghost breakout. People are singing, people are crying, people are weeping, and I begin to feel something stir in my spirit. My my, my it's, oh inside was just you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm trying to explain it. You know what I'm talking about? Begin to stir up inside. And so I, I said, I'm going to try this raising hands thing. So I raised my hands and, and next thing you know, now I, I, sw well, I shouldn't swear, just as God is my witness, this happened. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I raised my hand, all of a sudden I started going like back and forth. Now nobody was pushing me. Nobody touched my shoulders. Nobody tried to, I've had people do that in church, try to rock people. But don't rock them, they'll do it by themselves. Leave them alone. The spirit is movement. The spirit will move. You ain't got to, you know, get two people on each side doing this. Just let God move. You ain't got to take someone's tongue and shake it around. Just let God move. So I got my hands up. Next thing I'm going back. And, and you know, I do things sometimes. Don't even realize, like, like when I sit down, I sit down real, boom, I sit down real hard. I don't even realize some of the things that I do. I don't realize how loud I am sometimes. My wife's like, you're so loud. So it's the same thing. I was doing like this and didn't realize the next thing I know, I look down, I'm rocking. I'm like, wait a minute, there's something going on here. And then I started to feel God pull me towards the altar. Start, and some of you have had this and, and some of you have not listened and, and, and most of you have, but to pull me towards the altar. Now that scared me. You mean, I ain't going up there. There ain't nobody else in the altar. I, but I'd seen people go up there, but there was nobody else up there at church. I'm, th I'm thinking to myself, as soon as I get down there, they're going to stop everything. I'm going to look like an idiot sitting right there and I'm just... Everybody going to look at me like, what is he doing? So that was my flesh, but my spirit was drawing me. I'm like, Psh, hey, come here. I was getting that to the altar. Psh, hey, come on, come here. And so, man, that was the longest walk. It looked like 10,000 miles. I was like, I ain't going up there. But the spirit saying, go. And I'm sitting here having an argument with the spirit. But what if they stop? They stop. I'm be up to He's saying, go. Just go. Oh, it's me. You're feeling me. Go down. I've got more for you. I'm like, but I'm, I'm not trying to do that. So I, I, as God is my witness, I did this. Because I was about four, four seats in. So I was, about, I was about here, back there. I was on that side. Right about where Sister, um, Sister Veronica is. Right about there. That was a long walk. And I started inching. Now, me, I'm not 
a shy person. Understand this. I'm not shy. There's something, there's a distinction between what I was experiencing before and what I'm experiencing now. There is a different power. There is something that's drawing me closer and I'm starting inching over because I was too scared to just walk four seats over and come down the aisle. Now you're talking about somebody who's generally not nervous. I'm not, uh, I'm an outgo, oh, of course, I mean, you guys know who, me, who I am. I mean, you know my personality, but I was frozen where I stood because I could not move up here to come down. And then I, you know, the spirit saying, go when I'm saying no. And then I thought to myself, okay, I'll go. And brother Tony sits right about here. Brother Tony sits there. So, or was it on the same side? Anyway. I'm going to go, I'm going to go down and tap brother Tony on the shoulder for him to come with me when I go. So I won't be by myself that I can do. So I start inching over, but then the next fear came over, but well, yeah, but they're, they're going to get ready to start. No one else is down there. And then the pastor came off the platform and started praying for someone right about here. And she was you know, tore up and the Holy Ghost was moving and she's weeping and crying. And, and now I knew he wasn't going to start. I knew church ain't going to start right this minute. I got some time. So, boom, my courage came up, and I stepped in the hallway. Didn't even touch Brother Tony. I didn't, I didn't want, I was too scared to stop. I turned the corner, and bam, it was about, oh, praise God, it was about this far. It was a smaller church. It was about that far. I remember turning the corner. I didn't have time to talk to Brother Tony. I, I got to get up here because I'm afraid I'm going to turn around and sit here and begin to praise. And then I felt somebody praying for me. Hit my knees. First time ever happened. Crying out to God. This is the guy with, you know, long hair and a ponytail, wearing my hair in a bun and, and my little shorts and my little shirt, trying to look cute, trying to catch me a Christian girl. And I got my hand, oh, and then Brother Tony comes up and puts his hand on my back. And it was my first near slain experience. I just went, oh. But they had me so I didn't fall out or nothing. And I began to praise and worship and weep. And I had never cried in front of people. Let alone a bunch of people I don't know. In a church. There's a distinction. Something different was going on. Then I got up and went back to my seat. Turned, Tony turned around and looked at me and said. You'll get the Holy Ghost yet. Some of you heard this story. I was like what? I want to punch him. What do you mean I'll get. Remember, you know that feeling you had so bad you wanted the Holy Ghost. Well I had that for a couple of weeks. I wanted this thing. I wanted it and I couldn't get it. And so when I got up there and had that experience with God, I was like, I'm, I, I feel it. I feel, I must, I got the Holy Ghost. You'll get it yet. I was like, what was that? What was all that? So what I learned is I hadn't spoken in tongues. I hadn't spoken in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. When the Spirit gives the utterance, that saying, yes, I'm here. I'm in your body. I'm going to take over. That's why we seek it. That's why we, we help people push forward. And I didn't have anybody praying on me. They were just kind of letting me be, which was probably smart. Because somebody would have got in my face. I'd be like, hey, hey, I'm chilling. Let me, let me go at my own pace. That, that's important to let people grow at their own pace. You can't push people too hard. They fall down. And if they fall down, they might fall right out of the church. So we got to love them, encourage them. I'm saying all that to say this. There is a difference from where I was to where I ended up and what we're doing now. I never turned back from that. I got some Bible studies, understood the difference. And this is what I want you to know today. There is a difference. And so when I learned the difference, I held on to it and I never let go. Because the word of God is clear. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts to the marrow and to the bone. And it gets to the nitty-gritty. It'll tell you ex what I love about these things. Whenever there's a... a, a a discrepancy between two people's belief systems the word answers the question even if there's two differences like you know well you're saying this and I'm saying this well let's go here bam there's the answer now whether or not people receive that answer is the difference so what happened on this day on the day of Pentecost people just got in the Holy Ghost 